Hello, I'm Scott Kasky. I'm here at uh, Clean Sports Woodwork and Shop in Hickory, and I'm going to do a little demo on how to take a uh, English style bowl gouge and uh, make it into a fingernail uh, Ellsworth style uh, grind on it. Uh, first, I'm going to do one freehand uh, on the bench grinder, and then we're going to go through one uh, video with the Wolverine system uh, showing you how to use the Wolverine jig, and then we'll also show how to use the Tormek and set it up uh, so you can. Uh, use whichever system you have to, to get the op most optimal uh, use out of your uh, equipment. Uh, start off with, I'm going to just kind of go over what a English grind is. Uh, this is the standard English grind. It is a just basically the standard flute with a bevel on the top. This is typically how the English use their uh, bowl gouges. Uh, in America, we tend to not like this very much because it does have a tendency to grab if you're roughing out uh, and everything with it. But it does have one major advantage in this uh, in this factor, or even with the ears just slightly pulled back, and that is in the bottom of a bowl. When you get in the deep into a bottom of a bowl with this bevel like this uh, and like it, you can get and clean up the bottom of a bowl a little bit better uh, in this uh, situation. But this is the general profile in which we like uh, in America. It's, more, it's mostly common, the Ellsworth grind. And it is very easily achieved uh, uh, and maintained once you kind of get the idea of how to, to, do, uh, to do it. All right, this is the standard English grind uh, on uh, a flute, which is uh, how the English typically make their bowl gouges. If you notice, it has a pretty much straight up and down ears on it. And in America, we tend to prefer an English or an Ellsworth style grind, which looks like this. You can see the difference where the ears are pulled back. Uh, it's uh, much less for getting catches. It's uh, more forgiving. It's also a more versatile tool. So what we will typically do is we will remove the big shoulders up here and go back, sweep them back. There is an advantage to having an English bowl gouge in your toolkit is in the bottom of a bowl. It, if you've got a deep bowl, it's easier to get in the bottom and clean up the bottom, but you want to keep these ears away from the wood because it will make a nasty catch if you're not, uh, not, not ready for it. The process in which we'll go from getting from this to this will consist of first, we will take and grind the that front, those ears back, we'll just take it straight up against the grinding wheel like this and go down until we get it to the very tip and then have it swept back as far as we want for our ears for our uh, English grind. After we do that, we will take and set our grinder up the right angle, which is this angle here is typically what I tend to use, which is around 40, between 40 and 45 degrees. There's a lot of debate on which is the correct angle, somewhere in between there, but just pick something. Once you get used to it, you'll be happy with it. Um, but once you get that plate set where you can set this down on and it makes contact with your wheel, like something like that, then we're ready to remove the uh, excess off of here to get that English grind. What we're gonna do now is you see, this one has still has that hard flat surface on it and this one's already been ground back. What we're gonna do is take it and set it flat against the tool rest and we're gonna roll it into the wheel, like my, up here where my thumb's the wheel, we're gonna keep it flat against the tool rest completely and we're gonna roll it over and in until we remove that stock all this stock over here, what we're going to do is going to leave this fine little edge on the edge of this here and remove all this on this side over here. And this is what we're going to be left with. Have a container of water so you can keep your tool cool so you don't take uh, the temper out uh, of the tool while you're, uh, while you're cutting because you're going to see me constantly quench uh, to keep the tool cool. By the way, this is a slow speed grinder. It's 1800 RPM. Try not to use the high speed grinder because it gets too hot too quick. You remove stock way too fast. So pretty much all wood turners, if you're using a grinder, recommend finding a lower speed grinder. To start off with, I'm just gonna hold the tools up high on the tool rest. I'm gonna come in, let both ears make contact, and I'm just gonna work it down. And I'm telling you, I'm not even positive which uh, stone I'm on, if I'm on the course of the fine, it really doesn't matter for what I'm doing. I'm just uh, grinding it back and take a look and see I'm not all the way back, not, not all the way back to the point yet. So I still got some more to remove, but you see how the color is just 
uh, changing on this tool, which is telling me I'm getting it hot. Anytime you get a tool hot, you do ch change the temper. So no longer than I've been on the grinder right now, I am changing the temper somewhat on the tool. So that's the why you want to constantly quench. And you see I'm getting closer. I'm starting to see sparks come across the front, which is telling me I'm getting really close. You can see I've got just a little dab left on the very top edge that's not shiny, which tells me I'm not at that front edge yet. I think I just saw some sparks, just did. Let's quench that. And you can start to see just a very faint shine across the top of it. Bench grinder. First, I'm gonna take a Sharpie and uh, put uh, black on the back side of this so I can check my uh, uh, angle. The other thing you'd want to do is go ahead and uh, power the, the machine completely off and preferably unplug it. I'm going to leave it plugged in just for the sake of the video for speed, but I'm going to hold this down on this bench and I'm going to kick this angle up and move it until I get it pretty close and I'm going to spin backwards and see how I'm I, I'm hitting on the bottom side, so I need to tip it down a little bit, which I also need, I'm going to need to come in some too, so let's do that. And if you notice, this is not exactly the steadiest uh, piece right here, which is fine. It's all good. It'll be close enough for what we're doing. And you see I'm starting to get a line go all the way across to the tip top. It's close enough for us to do what we're needing. The key here is to keep this tight against this tool rest at all times. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and, and just work this one side down. And we're gonna quench quite frequent in there so we don't can keep the temper in that tool from removing all the temper in it. You can see that little line gets smaller and smaller. And you can see it's getting closer that this whole shoulder is disappearing and we've still got this shoulder over here just like in that wooden demo model. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep on rolling it. And when once we get it to that edge, you'll notice that there will be sparks coming across the top edge. You start seeing them now, it means we're really close to having it where we need to be. You can barely see a shiny line up there, which means there's just a little bit left to catch. I don't know if you can see it in the camera or not, but there's a real shiny line right where my thumbnail is. That means we've just got a little flat spot up there. So we're almost there on that. All right, now we have our basic grind. And we can go back and touch up once we get it closer, but uh, we'll get the other side. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. I'm gonna move this out. Now we've got our rough fingernail grind. You can see the, the grind marks in here are not real even and smooth, which is one major advantage to having a jig do it. But now that we've got this, you also notice I've got a pretty heavy point on the front. So now I'm gonna go back and clean up and kind of sweep it all the way around to round my point back out like we would normally have in our normal uh, grind. So we're gonna just kind of swing. It's easier to do one side than the other than come back up and clean up that point. The key to this is keep your nose or the tool 
it's tight to the tool rest. Now you can see that sharp point is now gone off the front of it, which is what you're wanting. I'm gonna make a few final good cleaning passes and see if I can clean up some of those grind marks. That's how you take a standard English grind to a uh, bowl gouge, uh, an English or a, a, a more of an Ellsworth grind, freehand. And if you can see, we got all sorts of little waves and stuff in the in the uh, surface, and we do have a little discoloration, but that was because we were uh, heating it up pretty good. So that means those are tempers slightly off where you see the the major color uh, changes, but it should not be enough to make a big difference in the tool. Uh, next, we'll show using a um, Wolverine jig how to do the same type of profile and then we'll also go over a with a Tormex so keep look out for those videos as well